What's up YouTube, Official Coding Network, and welcome to the third episode of this Java game programming tutorial series. In the last episode, we created the display for our game. In this episode, I'm going to teach you about variables, constructors, and methods. Unfortunately, this episode is going to be a little more, more boring than the last one, but it is important that I teach you these concepts as they come into use very often. Alright, so firstly, variables. What is a variable? A variable is simply an object that stores data. It can store many different types of data depending on how we declare it, such as integers, doubles, longs, floats, strings, booleans, bytes, characters, and I'm sure there is more. What we're going to do now is to declare two integer variables that will store the width and height of our display. To declare these integers, above our main method, we type public, so we can be freely accessed from different classes, static, which means we can access this variable in static methods such as our main method, and we can access this variable without having to create an instance of game first, final, meaning, meaning we can't modify it once we define it. This type of variable is referred to as a constant because its value stays constant throughout our entire code, int, meaning integer, which is the type of variable we want. And finally, we give our variable a name, so in this case, we'll call it width. So far we declared our variable, but we haven't actually defined it yet, so to define it and or give it a value, we type equals and then whatever value we want, so I'm going to set it to 1280. So now you want to do this again, but um, you want to name this variable height and set it equal to 720. Alright, so now that we've created our width and height variables, how do we actually use them? Well, that's pretty simple. Go to frame.setSize and replace the numbers we put in manually, also referred to as hard coding, with our width and height variables respectively. We can also print out these variables into the console by um, typing system.out.println. We will put in our width uh, plus, and then we put in quotation marks, which is one space in the middle, or we could even put a comma to put a space between our width and height, otherwise it'll appear just like one big number in the console, then another plus symbol, and then height. So if we run our game now, as you can see, uh, we have the width and height of our, dis our display that uh, we set here, and uh, you can see that our width and height variables are being printed out in the console. Alright, so moving on from variables, now let's cover methods. A method is a block of code which we can tell when to get executed any time we want by calling it. So two major types of methods are void methods and methods that return a variable. A void method is a method that executes the code inside of it that does nothing else, for example, our main method. But other methods, when called, will return a value for a variable of our choosing. To better demonstrate this, let's create one ourselves. To do this, we'll type public int test method, give it some brackets and then curly body. And as you can see, when we make this method, we get an error because we have to return an integer. To return the integer in the method, we would type return and then whatever value we want. So I'm going to put 9. And what we can do now in our main method is go to our uh, system.out.print line. We can delete this width and height and instead replace it with test method. But however, if we run our game, as you can see, our game crashes. And that's because we cannot access a non-static method from a static method, which is what we're trying to do now. To fix this, we can either create an instance of our game class, which we'll do in a little while, or the quicker way is to simply just make our method static like so. So if we run our game again, then as you can see, 9 has been printed out into the console. And the variable type doesn't just have to be an integer as well, it can be any type of variable I mentioned before, or ones that I didn't mention, which there might be some. We can also create integers and set it to the returned value of this method, so under our width and height, if we create a private int test and we set it equal to test method then this um, test integer will equal to 9. Now if you're thinking well what's the use for this why can't we just type 9 instead of creating an entirely new method for it then you have a pretty good point but this is where parameters come in. Parameters are variables or other sorts of information that we give to the method before running the code inside of it that we can use to change the result of the method. So what I'll do with this test method is do something called refactoring it. And refactoring allows us to change the name of our method, but all the places we have referred to this name inside of our code, it will also change it to be the new name we set. So to do this, you can uh, right click of the name you want to refactor, uh, go to refactor, rename, and then here you can change the name of your method. So I'm going to name rename mine to add. And as you can see, um, 
all the times we mentioned test method, it's also been changed to add. All right, so to give our method parameters, inside of these brackets, we type the parameters we wanna give it. And in this case, we're gonna give it two integer parameters named A and B. What we can do now inside of this method, we can make an integer called sum, and we'll set it equal to A plus B. What we'll do now is that we'll return sum instead of returning nine. So if you go back to the places we call it our add method, I'm just gonna delete this private in test, but what we can do now is that we can input two variables into, this, into these brackets. So I'm gonna type 20 and 47. And if we run our game, as you can see in the console, we get 67, which is uh, the correct result for this sum. Now realize that we don't make the variables inside of our method private, static, or anything like that. And that's because there simply is no point in doing so. In fact, if we try to make these um, variables public or static, it simply doesn't work because there's no point in doing so. But why is there no point in doing that? It's because the variables created inside of this method, so in this case, the parameters and their sum, will only be visible inside of this method. If we try to go to our main method and set sum equal to 10, as you can see, it doesn't work because sum is only visible within the uh, body of this method. So making these variables public wouldn't make sense because we wouldn't be able to access these variables public anyway. Also, two quick side notes. Realize that we don't have to call our main method, it gets called automatically by the JVM, and so we don't have to worry about calling it. Secondly, uh, with our methods and uh, variables and all that, we actually don't have to make them um, public. We can just remove the public modifier and it'll be completely fine. By default, I think these variables are set to be protected, which means only other files inside of the same package this is in can access these variables. But it's still uh, good to specify what type of files we want it to be allowed to access anyways. All right, so now that we've finally gotten methods out of the way, let's move on to constructors. A constructor is a type of method, but it only gets called once, and that is when we create an instance of the classes in. To give our game a constructor, um, above our main, uh, I mean, add method, we'll type public game, give a brackets and then a body. And to test our constructor, we'll copy this system.out.print line, paste it in here. And now we're going to create an instance of our game class. So in our main method, we'll type game, game is equal to a new game. And if we run our game, as you can see, 67 is being printed out into the console, showing us that our constructor is working correctly. Also, in some programming languages such as C++, there are things called destructors that get called when the instance it's a part of gets terminated, most often when we close the game, but we don't have those in Java. And remember how we can give our methods parameters? Well, because a constructor is basically a type of method, we can give our constructor parameters as well. So, in the side the brackets of this uh, our game constructor, I'm going to put in a string parameter called text. And I'm going to replace this system.out.print line uh, with the text that we specify in the parameters. So in our game instance, uh, we can put in the string by typing in quotation marks. We've done this before. And uh, typing whatever text you want. So I'll just print out test. And if we run our game now, as you can see, uh, test has been printed out into the console. All right, now that I've explained uh, variables, methods, and constructors, we're now gonna modify our JFrame a bit, which will allow us to draw graphics onto it. So first, what we wanna do is make our game extend canvas by typing extends canvas after, t after uh, public class game and make sure to import canvas. And I won't even bother explaining what extends means until the next episode because I've already explained way too much things this episode. So now we're going to our constructor, remove the system.out.print line and create a new instance of Java's dimension class by typing dimension, we'll call it size, and set it equal to a new dimension. And in the parameters of this dimension, we're gonna put in our width and height and make sure to import dimension. And by the way, a dimension is a simple class that represents a two-dimensional space as an object in which we're gonna use this space to define the area of our display. All right, so now what we wanna type is set preferred size and in the brackets we'll type size and we'll copy and paste this two more times and we want to set uh, in one of them set preferred to maximum and set preferred to minimum 
And what these lines of code do, it's pretty self-explanatory. It pretty much sets the preferred maximum and minimum size of our J-frame to uh, this dimension here. All right, after we finish creating our dimension, we actually need to apply it to our J-frame. To do this, we're gonna remove frame.setSize, and we're gonna add in two new lines of code. The first one is frame.add. And inside the brackets, we're gonna specify the instance of our game class, so in this case, it's game. And this pretty much makes our J-frame take in these instructions, setting the preferred maximum and minimum size, and applies it to itself. And the next line is simply frame.pack. And this makes sure the set preferred size and all that actually works. So think of frame.add as making our JFrame recognize these size settings and frame.pack as making sure they actually work. So if we try running our game, as you can see, it has the dimensions we set it to and uh, yeah, everything's working. And uh, that is going to wrap up the episode for this week. Sorry that it was a bit of a boring episode, but it is important that we get through all these things I covered today as we'll be using them very often as we create our game. Next episode, we'll be creating our game loop, which will hopefully be a bit more interesting to you all. But anyway, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please leave a like, comment, and share. Feel free to follow me on one of my social medias, links down in the description. And if you're having a problem with your game, or you just have a programming-related question, feel free to email me or contact me on one of my social medias. I'll see you all soon. Bye.